Hi, my name is Derek Garcia from LearnSBomb.com, and today I'll be covering the Dependency Track plugin for Jenkins. This plugin is a great addition to any Jenkins project and adds SBOM information to Dependency Track as part of a CI CD pipeline. Before I start, you'll need access to both a Dependency Track and a Jenkins server. You can check out our demo on Dependency Track to learn how to set up a server, and I'll leave a link below to learn how to set up a Jenkins server. With the server set up, we can get started. I've already set up two projects, one with and one without vulnerabilities, both of which are stored locally on my Jenkins server. To install a plugin, you need to go to Manage Jenkins, then to Manage Plugins, over to Available, and we need to search for Dependency Shrack, like so. We just need to click to install, and we can download now and install after restart. After a moment, Jenkins will reboot and the tool will be installed. After that's finished, we need to set the dependency track URL and API key. We can set this under Manage Jenkins and Configure System. And for a fresh install, it should be at the very bottom of this page. Just there. You can set your destination API URL, so in my case, and for the API key, we can create a new Jenkins secret text. And to get the secret text, we can go over to dependency track under administration, access management, and teams, and automation, and our key is here. You can create a new team for this if you'd like, but I'm just gonna modify the automation. Since I'm using this key, I'll need to make sure it has the following permissions, bomb upload, project creation, upload, view profile, vulnerability analysis, portfolio management, and view vulnerability. All right, my key's been updated. Portfolio management and view vulnerability are optional, but I'll keep them for this demonstration. Now we're gonna copy the key and add it to the Jenkins secret. And I'm going to name this DT key. After that, we can check the auto create projects as you wish. I'm gonna keep it on and I'm gonna test my connection and we can see everything is okay. All right, once we save that, we can get started with the plugin. Starting with the saved project, you can open it and go to the configure tab. The plugin itself doesn't generate SBOMs, so we need to provide it with one. If you have a location for SBOMs, maybe generated from another stage with another command line tool or some other method, you can skip this step. However, I'll be adding a build step that will generate an SBOM. To do this, I'm going to select build steps and create a new build step. Since my Jenkins server is hosted on a Windows machine, I'll be using a Windows batch command but these commands can easily be converted to shell. To break down the commands, I'm downloading a release of Cyclone DX CLI that I'll be using to generate a Cyclone DX SBOM. Remember, because we're using dependency track, we need to use Cyclone DX SBOMs. Any other forms will be rejected. If you want to learn more about this tool, be sure to check out our review of Cyclone DX CLI. There you can learn more about how this command breaks down, but in short, I'm generating an SBOM named bomb.json that excludes Git files and the binary itself. The last step just prints the resulting SBOM to the standard output. Now that we have the SBOM, we can use dependency track plugin. Moving on to the post build, we can select the publish BOM to dependency track. And here we either update or create a project. Since I don't have any projects, I'll be creating one by giving one a name and version. Next, we need to set the artifact to the SBOM that we're uploading. In my case, I'm using the new SBOM I just created, but if you're using existing SBOMs, just pass the file path. I'm going to be enabling a synchronous mode for this demo. This is optional and without it, just the SBOM will be uploaded. However, with synchronous mode, we can see the results and fail the build, which we'll see in the next example. We can also set risk thresholds for total and new findings. These are also optional. However, they will require synchronous mode to be enabled and used. Otherwise, they'll be ignored. These thresholds can be set and configured down here. I'll fill in some values but you can adjust them to your threat tolerance. With the build settings complete, we can save and build. And we can see the build was successful. Switching over to dependency track, we can go back to your projects and confirm that a project was created. Opening up the job, we can view the output, which shows the build instructions we had set and the resulting SBOM that we printed. Since we had synchronous mode enabled, 
we can also see the dependency track report. This was a safe example, so right now there's nothing to report. We'll see more information here with the next vulnerable project. Now with the vulnerable project, it's set up in a similar fashion to the safe one. And instead of generating an SBOM, I'm using one that I generated inside the project using a command line tool. And instead of creating a new project, we're simply updating the existing one. But all the threat thresholds are the same. So if I save this and build the project, This time the build failed since the fail criteria was met. We can check dependency track to confirm the changes has been made. I reload the page. We can see now our project has a number of vulnerabilities. Looking into the build details, dependency track gives us a nice visual overview of the project's vulnerabilities. We can see here a nice bar graph and we can view a report which lists basic information about them. To wrap up, the Jenkins Dependency Track plugin is an excellent continuous integration tool for SBOMs. The plugin can be set up and easily integrated into existing Jenkins projects and pipelines. The tool provides a hassle-free way to incorporate SBOMs into your workflow and help secure it without affecting your output rate. I'd highly recommend this plugin if you're using Jenkins as part of your CI CD process. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at learnaspbomb.com. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here, and then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.